maybe the author, John Windham, was onto something when he wrote The Day of the Trifids, because as horrifying as this may sound, there are actually some plants capable of eating animals. Yes, really, these are plants that eat animals. Number 15. Venus Flytrap there's perhaps no other carnivorous plant as famous as the Venus flytrap, the startling leaf mechanism resembling a kind of spiked alien mouth in green and red give it a creepiness and extraordinariness. that few other meat-eating plants can match. Instead of letting the flies or spiders simply drop into a tank of fluid or get stuck on a resin trap, these have jaws that clamp shut on prey. And the way they work is surprisingly complex. Once a fly lands to start drinking up that sweet, sweet sap on the inside of the jaws, it will almost certainly trigger one of the tiny spines, which are on the surface of the leaf. This sets a timer running. And if the fly hits another one in 20 seconds, the trap will close. This is to reduce closures on useless items and make sure it's a moving fly. Also, half trapping a fly is fatal to both fly and plant, as the bacterial decomposition of the fly will seep into the exterior of the plant, while within, a special antiseptic is produced to make sure this does not affect the plant as it breaks down and digests its prey. To avoid this, the digestive enzymes are only released once the fly has hit six or more triggers following the closure of the trap. So the Venus flytrap can be sure it's caught a nutritious live insect, and not just a piece of leaf or bark. The plants are found in a tiny area around Wilmington, NC, and an estimated 5 million of the plants in 1979 now stands at just 160,000 in the wild, a massive 93% destruction rate in 40 years. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Biblis Linaflora the Biblis plant was named after the Greek mythological figure Biblis, the granddaughter of Apollo, who fell in love with her twin brother Conus. When Conus rejected her, she cries too long and so hard, she turned into a spring. The Biblis plant is covered in sparkling balls of mucilage, a clear sugary liquid produced by nearly all plants, which looks like tears. The droplets sit on the branches of the plant, which spread out in a shape a little like a fountain, and the rainbow-colored leaves sparkle in the sunlight under all the clear droplets, making this one of nature's masterpieces. However, for all its beauty, the rainbow plant is also deadly to flies at least. Once trapped on the sticky, brightly colored leaves, the plant releases enzymes which begin to digest the flies. And so the Bible supplements its dietary needs by digesting the live insects which fly into its sticky clutches. Native to Australia, the Bible is also flowers, blooming in late spring and producing a bright pink flower, and are popular plants for home cultivation. Number 13. Catopsis Berteroniana the Catopsis berteroniana might not have been given a snappy name derived from a Greek goddess or a badass snake, but that doesn't make this carnivorous plant any less impressive. Known as the powdery strap air plant in vernacular terms, it has a huge range, growing from southern Florida all the way down to southern Brazil. It grows on the branches of trees, but it is not a parasite. It merely anchors itself to the tree branch, preferring shady ones by the roots. It grows in a large tubular form and collects rainwater in an internal tank, which turns into a fluid, which will be the deathbed for many flying insects. The flies are attracted to a white powder which the plant produces. The powder reflects ultraviolet light, which the flies can see, and once they land, they slip down the leaves into the tank, where they drown, and the fluid there begins to absorb the nutrients produced by the rotting fly carcasses. It's not all evil and doom in this air plant, though, as the plant also supports an incredible 11 different kinds of organism in mutual dependence, mostly forms of mosquito who are adapted to flee the plant once they develop from larvae. The larvae help the plant with digestion, while the plant also feeds the larvae. Number 12. Trigger Plant 
The Stylidium genus of plants, also known as trigger plants, contains over 300 species, all of which are native to Australia. There's a wide variety in the size of trigger plants, ranging from just a couple of inches tall to almost six feet in height. Let us take a look on the flowers too. They are all characterized with pinkish flowers, which are zygomorphic. This means they are symmetrical in one direction, but not in the other. These flowers have an extraordinary pollination system. A floral column, which includes the stamen, is triggered by the physical contact of a flying insect. When the insect is detected, this column fires forward and covers the insect in pollen, an act which takes around 15 milliseconds. The insect is stunned but unharmed, and will carry on pollinating with plenty of trigger plant pollen on its body. The column resets itself over a period of a few minutes to half an hour. As well as this, the trigger plant is carnivorous, producing mucilage, which causes small insects, ones too small to be useful in pollination, to stick to its various parts, which enzymes then begin to dissolve. Number 11. Portuguese Sundew the Portuguese sundew is a distant relative of the Biblis plant from earlier, and is native to the western Mediterranean, mainly Portugal, Spain, and Morocco. Unlike most carnivorous plants, and someone that I can get as much information about how much sunlight they provide to the plant. The Portuguese sundew can grow in dry soil, which is poor in nutrients. The nutrients, of course, come from the massacring of unsuspecting flies which stumble foolishly into its sticky grip. These plants have a distinctive outward coiling of the long leaves, but lack the moving parts of some sundew plants. However, once a fly makes contact with the mucilage-covered leaves, there's usually only one result, a struggle to escape, which only results in the insect becoming more covered in the glue, until finally it dies of suffocation or exhaustion. The plant then releases enzymes which begin the process of breaking down the fly into important nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus, which it feeds upon. Like the deadly seducer it is, the Portuguese sundew produces beautiful yellow flowers and a strong, very sweet scent to attract more insects into its monstrous trap. Number 10. Corridula Rorigula is a genus of plants containing two quite similar species, both native to the Cape of Southern Africa. Its Latin name means dewy, and in English it is sometimes called the dewstick or flybush. They stand between 4 and 6 feet tall, and occur in scattered populations with sparse growth. Wanzen leben auf der Pflanze, ohne kleben zu bleiben. So finding one is something of a rarity. It also is the only carnivorous bush in the world, and its name comes from the unique extra sticky sap it produces, which is like pine resin, and comes from the main tissue of the plant, which is woody. As well as catching bugs, these plants even catch and feed on birds. The carcasses attract insects, who devour the stuck prey and then drop feces into the soil, which feeds the plant, especially the assassin bug which seems to be immune to the sticky resin, crawling all over the plant's glue-covered tentacles with ease, due to having their own greasy covering over their bodies, which prevents direct contact with the sticky resin. Early settlers on the Cape used Rorigula in their homes as living flytraps, in an attempt to keep the bugs under control. And and there's still not much humans have come up with that is more efficient a flytrap than this amazing plant. Number 9. Butterwort Butterworts are a genus of plants containing at least 80 species, and they range across Africa, Europe, and the Americas. Their Latin name Pinguicula is derived from a description of the plant as having fat and tender leaves. The flower looks monstrous. It's probably the size of a viola. And the butter part of the name, in English, is also meant to describe the fatty, glistening look of this plant. The leaves are used to lure, trap, and then digest insects. In winter, the rosette of leaves change in appearance, becoming smaller and greener as they enter their non-carnivorous phase. While in summer, the leaves expand, and take on darker purple hues as the plant becomes a meat eater. The leaves, which in some species can grow to a foot long, are covered in small glands which are spread across the leaf and secrete mucilage in droplets, which look like water and so attracts thirsty insects. However, this water is super sticky resin, and it's not long before the insect 
finds itself wrapped in the resin and on its way to insect hell. The more the insect struggles, the more the plant releases mucilage. The enzymes then released begin the process of liquidizing the insides of the insect, leaving only the undigestible exoskeleton once the plant has drunk down everything else. Number 8. Corkscrew Plant the corkscrew plant, or Genlisi genus, contains about 30 species, which live in parts of Africa and Central and South America, their habitat being divided when the two continents split apart around 140 million years ago. They prefer wet soil and are unusual herbs in that they have no roots. Instead, they have overgrown leaves, which do the usual things, including photosynthesis and a second system of leaves underground, which keep the plant anchored, absorb water, and also catch and eat prey. The plant is screwed in by these subterranean leaves, as the name suggests, and their prey is not particularly large. In fact, it mainly feeds on some of the tiniest microfauna out there, with a particular appetite for single-celled protozoans. So if you're in possession of at least two cells, you're probably safe from this carnivorous plant. And just for reference, the average human being has around 37 trillion cells. Charles Darwin noted that he believed that the corkscrew plant was carnivorous, but it took until 1998 for this suspicion to be proved. And it was in fact the first plant known to trap protozoa, although others have been discovered since. Number 7. Cobra Lily the cobra lily is one of the most unusual-looking plants in nature. It is native to North California and Oregon, and is a very rare plant. Cobra lily, the Darlingtonia californica. Growing only in low-nutrient bogs with cool running water, if you are lucky enough to find one of these pitcher plants, you may witness its incredible feeding habits. The tubular leaves stand up and widen like the head of a rearing cobra, giving it a spectacular, if uncanny and alien-like appearance. Furthermore, the leaves are partially translucent, which helps to confuse any unfortunate creatures who wander into the plant, leading them on to their doom. Living in poor soil means the plants must supplement the nitrogen content in their diet with carnivory, unlike other pitcher plants which collect rainwater. The cobra lily has a form of plump, which draws water up from the roots, and it is able to regulate the levels within, something unique in the plant world. This system, although complex, is much more efficient than other pitcher plants, and the cobra lily is usually filled with the remains of its victims. Number 6. Waterwheel Plant if you thought the Venus flytrap was amazing, then the waterwheel plant is here to up the stanks. Whatever the Venus flytrap can do, this fascinating and endangered plant genus can do underwater. It is an aquatic plant which uses snapping traps similar to the Venus flytrap to catch water insects, tadpoles, and small fish. Once the genus included many species, but only one survives, and that species is a highly unusual global clone. With distributions across 40 countries, with little differentiation in the species, in spite of huge gaps in the areas they live in, as diverse as Russia's Arctic region to Australia to Africa, it is an extremely efficient trapper and the jaws close in just 100 milliseconds, which is among the fastest moving in the plant kingdom. Curiously, almost two-thirds of the surviving plants on Earth thrive in Chernobyl's nuclear exclusion zone, only adding to the badass nature of this plant. However, as humans have systematically destroyed wetland areas across the globe, this sensitive and complex plant has become endangered, with population reductions rivaling the devastating losses experienced by its land-dwelling distant relative, the Venus flytrap. Can we save this amazing plant from extinction? Time will tell. Number 5. Saracenia the Saracenia, sometimes known as the green pitcher plant, is native to the New World. Like all pitcher plants, it is one of the most striking carnivorous plants, with large tapered tubes, which grow up to 3 feet in height, ranging in color from green to red. It is highly endangered. In fact, it is the most endangered of all pitcher plants. Including some real monsters. 
due to overcollection. Its native habitat once included Tennessee, but it is now extinct there. It continues to grow in Alabama, Georgia, and North Carolina. Like other pitcher plants, the insects are attracted to the sweet smell, but soon find themselves sliding down toward the pool of digestive fluid, guided on by hairs, which point the way and make it impossible to turn back. Once widespread through bogs, it now only grows in small numbers, in 34 locations. Three cultivars were created through selective crops breeding, although one of these was lost in a greenhouse catastrophe and is now unfortunately extinct. Number 4. Australian Sundew As ever, no crazy thing from nature can be complete without an Australian entry that finds a way to be even more terrifying and awesome than the already terrifying and awesome plants on this list. The Australian sundew has the most ruthless killing mechanism in the plant world, using a catapult system to throw a fly to its doom. In a cultivar arrangement, the sundew has an array of snap tentacles which, when triggered by a fly, launch the creature into a set of glue tentacles, which then begins slowly moving the dying fly down into the mouth of the plant for digestion. Special high-speed cameras allowed researchers to capture the moment and the catapults fire at an incredible speed, sensing and then catapulting the insect into the sticky zone in just 400 milliseconds. How this works without muscles or a nervous system remains a mystery, but this plant's mucilage has incredible elastic properties which are being used in nanotechnology research. This is one incredible plant that is not only every fly's worst nightmare, but may be helping shape our very own future. Number 3. Yellow Pitcher Plant the yellow pitcher plant is another meat-hungry plant native to the New World, found mostly in the southeastern United States, running from Alabama to Georgia and also through Florida, Virginia, and the Carolinas aptly named yellow pitcher plant. The yellow pitcher plant traps insects using a kind of rolled up leaf which has a spectacular bright yellow color, and these can grow to a huge 3 feet in height, although most examples are somewhere around 20 inches tall. The pitcher has a kind of lid to stop rainwater diluting the digestive fluid contained within. Hairs on the plant point down toward the pitcher part, directing any curious insect to its inevitable doom. The fly is drawn on by the scent of a nectar produced by the plant, but this nectar is no ordinary nectar. It contains a toxin, which is also present in hemlock, and serves to incapacitate the insect, making its eventual fall into the digestive pitcher pit even more inevitable. This plant is easy to keep and cultivate, and is therefore one of the most popular carnivorous plants in greenhouses across the world. Just don't fall into one of the big ones. Number 2. Monkey Cup Nepenthes, sometimes known as monkey cups due to monkeys' habit of drinking from them, are tropical pitcher plants. The genus contains around 170 species, and they are distributed widely through parts of Asia, Australia, and Africa. Actually grows into one of these monkey cups. But the most diversity of the largest and strangest looking of these pitcher plants are found in the remaining rainforests of Borneo, Sumatra, and the Philippines. The plants have a climbing stem which can grow to up to 50 feet in length, and at the end is a pitcher, often brightly colored and resembling a large champagne flute. The pitchers are usually brightly colored, which aids in attracting insects, and the usual method is applied of a greasy slide down into the digestive fluid at the bottom of the pitcher, and in some species, such as the Rajah of Borneo, the pitcher is huge, measuring 16 inches long by 8 inches wide across the opening, and they can hold as much as 6 six pints of water or four pints of digestive fluid. This makes Nepenthes raja the only plant species known to regularly trap mammals for food, with rat remains having been found in them, as well as remains of lizards, frogs, and birds. This rare plant has long been sought after by collectors, although efforts are now being made to try and protect its natural habitat from human destruction. Number 1. Large Floating Bladderwort 
the large floating bladderwort, sometimes called the swollen bladderwort by those who wanted to give it a prettier name, is a large aquatic carnivorous plant native to the southeastern USA. It uses little pontoons arranged on the surface of the water, where they float and attract unsuspecting prey. The tiny bladder traps, for which this plant is named, can draw in a whole range of small insects and microfauna, as well as other plant forms. This species, unlike most other carnivorous plants, is highly adaptable and is now considered an invasive species in some parts of the US, where it has been introduced by humans and begun overwhelming natural flora native to those regions. Various methods have been used to control the plant, which is considered a weed in some areas, including sonar treatment, manual extraction, and the introduction of grass carp into the ponds where bladderwort is taking over, where the fish will use biocontrol by feeding on it. So although it's something of a pest, it's still a pretty amazing carnivorous plant. That's all the meat-eating flora we've got for today. Which of these plants would you most like to see in real life? Who would you have thrown to a Venus flytrap if you could find one big enough? To eat a human? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!